Hey, good afternoon, guys. It's Steve Cap. I've Jay. I've got some. I uh, got a video today on the Charlie Papa or Charlie Hotel Alpha 250 HD. Uh, this video today is going to talk about uh, radiation patterns, half power dB uh, intersection points on the lobe, and plus 3 dB uh, angle intersection points. So I got some pretty cool stuff to show you. We're going to look at the radiation patterns and dB loss, gain, uh, loss and gain on various bands. Uh, all calculations are based on the isotropic or isotropic unity gain uh, one, if you will. Uh, there are losses on 80, 40, and 20, and there are some gains on 15 and 10. And some of this material is covered in the amateur extra. The main thing we're going to look at today is we're going to be discussing what's called the elevation antenna pattern. Um, this is uh, this is a polar view where you would be looking down, like you might say, like uh, you. This is where you might do what's called a front to back ratio. Uh, and look at the dBs and so forth, but we're not going to be doing that today. We're going to strictly be looking at the elevation pattern, and we're going to be looking at the maximum radiation lobe. Uh, we're going to look at the angle, and then we're also going to look at the half 3 dB and plus dB, uh, 3 dB intersection points. All right. Okay, so the pattern things we're going to look at today are, number one, uh, the max radiation angle. And then, of course, the loss and gain at that angle, reference to a isotropic. Second part thing we're going to look at is lobe intersection points at the minus 3 dB point from the maximum uh, advertised uh, dB gain or loss. So basically, whatever this number here is, we're going to go 3 dB down, and we're going to see where the lobe intersects, and that'll give us our uh, 3 dB intersection point. Last thing we're going to look at is plus 3 dB beam width, which is going to give us kind of the angle or the degree of the beam uh, path, if you will, at a plus 3 dB. All right, so what we'll look at first on the omnidirectional is, first thing is we're going to look at what's called the maximum takeoff angle, which is right here. This is 64 degrees in both directions. Again, this is omnidirectional antenna, so this thing is radiating like a big fat donut. Then what we're going to look at here is very closely is we're going to look at this number right here, this minus 15 dB. Now what's minus 15? Minus 15 is reference to zero. And in all of my drawings here, the green line that you see right here, this would be zero dB right there. And now minus 15 dB would be here. And this is minus 18 dB. Now these are all going to be important here in a minute and you'll see why. So what we're saying here is at 0 dB, we are 15 down, 15 down from 0 dB, which is giving us a minus 15 dB intersection point right here. So that's what all this is looking at here. Essentially, what we're saying is uh, based on a unity gain antenna, this antenna here has a minus 15 dB loss. And at that intersection point, which happens to be at 64 degrees, and since we're omnidirectional, it's on both sides of the antenna. Think of it like a big fat donut. Next thing we're going to look at is the half point dB power intersection points on the lobe. What we'll be looking at here real simply is we want to look at, remember we have the green line is always 0 dB. Now we're going to go minus 15, which is, of course, what we talked about was the maximum radiation point at 64 degrees, but that's not what we're looking at here. What we're looking at here is 3 dB less from the intersection. So we said earlier our maximum intersection point or a maximum dB loss was roughly about a minus 15 dB. Now we're going to go down minus 3, which is what we're doing here. Now this line here, this blue line right here that I'm trying to draw an arrow to, this is going to be our uh, minus 3 dB uh, drop from the maximum point of the radiation line at 15. So essentially what we're saying here now is we want to look at this intersection point. That intersection point there and this intersection point here. Let me show you where these are over here on a close-up. This one right here is over here. This one down here is over here. So essentially what we're saying here is this is the point where the lobe intersects at the at the 3 dB point or 3 dB line down from the maximum radiated uh, dB loss. So 
that's what that looks like there. And again, again, everything here, remember the green line is the 0 dB. We have minus 15 dB, minus 18 dB. This distance here is 3 dB. So that is where we come up with the minus 3 dB power loss and intersection points. All right, the last thing we want to talk about is the plus dB3 angle. This is a little different. Now what we're doing is we're taking this these radiation patterns of these intersection points on the half 3 dB loss and we're projecting out at a plus 3 dB. So then what that's going to do is that's going to give us a accumulative angle here. This angle at a plus 3 dB, which is this line right there, is 47 degrees. So those are the three things we're calculating. Maximum radiation angle and dB loss or gain at the maximum lobe. Half, half 3 or minus 3 dB intersection points on the lobe and what angles those project. And then we're looking at the plus 3 dB intersection point on those angles, which will give us the beam width. So those are the three things we got going on here. And here's some close up over here real quick that you can see. Um, again, this is all pretty cool stuff. All this, all these charts are from Comet. Uh, Jeremy helped me get a lot of good information here. Um, so anyway, this is just kind of sharing with you uh, what we got. All right, everybody wants to know, what is, what is this antenna doing? Well, it's doing some very interesting things. It does have a tremendous amount of loss, um, up to 16 dB uh, at a 64 degree angle at 10 feet, uh, minus 15 dB at a 68 degree angle at 35 feet. And this is what I'm looking at right here. Most importantly is this column right here. All right. 35 feet on this chart, 10 feet on this chart. So let's talk a little bit about what are these numbers? What, where, where did I come up with these numbers? Based on my radio running at 100 watts, uh, at the output of the radio, uh, we're never going to get 100 watts at the antenna. We're always going to have some loss. So what I did in my math is I based on, I have 100 watts coming out of the radio, through the coax and the FWR and just various other mystery things in the coax transmission system, I estimate roughly about a 0.8 dB loss uh, in my transmission line, if you will. And I do with my SWR running about 1.3 to 1.4. Uh, th this is a conservative number. Maybe it might be a little higher, but I'm just going to use this as a baseline. So what does that mean essentially with a point uh, minus 8 dB loss, I'm only getting about 83 watts at the base of the antenna, but with all that loss and 80 meter, uh, I've almost got a minus 16 dB loss at 10 feet, and then I've got the 15 dB loss at 35 feet. There's my takeoff angles, 64 and 68. So essentially, if you do the math, uh, you're only getting about Two watts, two watts at the antenna radiating on 80 meter if I'm inputting 100 watts. But, uh, you know, if I have the antenna for 15 meter, for example, then the game changes completely. What happens here is on 15 watts, we actually pick up some gain. Now, on 10 feet, we're running about one gain or maybe uh, just a little bit over 1.1. Uh, not a whole lot of gain there, but check this out on 15 meter uh, at 35 feet up in the air. We're almost getting about three gain, 3 dB gain, which is going to crank our power back up to, you know, roughly almost doubling it. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. So, again, this is what we're dealing with here. So where is the antenna really, in my opinion, where it, it really is, is usable? I will tell you uh, on 80 meters. I do hear folks on the 3916 net and on some other nets. I hear them coming in from Austin, Dallas, Fort Worth. Um, I'm going to start participating in those nets and record videos so I can demonstrate if I'm able to talk to these same people in Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, Oklahoma on two watts. And I'm running about 2.5 watts because I'm, I'm 35 feet up in the air. But uh, again, that's not a whole lot. But uh, more videos to come. Uh, I can tell you on 40 meters, I have made voice contacts into Lubbock before in Oklahoma. And on 40 meter, essentially, uh, 
we are roughly running about uh, negative nine, almost a negative 10 dB, which is, uh, it takes us from 83 watts down to roughly eight watts. But I have made voice contacts on 40, and I've had pretty good signal reports too, and I've got some videos that I'll put some links in there that you can listen to them on 40 meter uh, with 100 watts. So, you know, uh, with this tremendous amount of loss on the antenna, there is uh, success, and there have been contacts. I've also made contact on CW on 40 meters. Keep in mind, on 40 meters, I'm running five watts, so you know, a 10 dB loss on five watts is what uh, a half a watt. Uh, I have to do the math there, but uh, that's very little power on 40 meters. Uh, and I have made successful CW contacts. Uh, matter of fact, I made one last night, Texarkana. So, uh, you know, though that's, you know, when you buy this antenna, you're, you, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get a tremendous amount of loss, but is that loss enough to spoil all your fun? Probably not. Um, so, uh, 20 meters is actually pretty acceptable because you're only getting about half, half of your power is being lost on 20 meters, which is very, very, totally cool. Uh, yeah, I'm estimating about a minus 3 dB. Uh, on at 35 feet, we only have about a minus 2.3 dB. So on 20 meters, uh, I'm pushing roughly about 48 watts. Uh, 40 meters, I'm roughly pushing about 6 watts. Uh, and then, of course, 2.57. Uh, 15 things change. I'm able to pick up some gain. Uh, not too much activity on 15. I wish there was. That would be a lot of pretty fun band to work on. Uh, basically, here I'm getting about 2.7 dB gain, which uh, uh, almost not doesn't double the power, but it gets it pretty close, uh, 156. Uh, and then, of course, on 28 meters, it's pretty much a unity gain at this point, about a 0.263. So, um, again, the antenna. It does have a lot of loss on 80 and 40, but is that enough a loss to really boil the fun? I don't think so. Uh, I think you can do a lot with two watts, three watts on HF, uh, but you know what? In time will tell because I will be making some videos to test 80 meters. All right, so the next part of the video is uh, the second video I'm gonna make is a little bit more of an individual uh, band by band uh because this is a lot of information and we'll take a look at 80 and so forth but let me show you the summaries real quick on 80 meter uh this is the summary real quick on 80 meter just wait here on the screen here for a second again about minus 16 db and minus 15 db and these are all your power calculations not a lot of power on on uh on 80 but, you know, if you're running 200 watts, you're getting 4 watts to the antenna. So, again, it's rated for 200 watts max. So you could probably run an amplifier with that amount of loss. Uh, you, you know, you probably still don't want to do it because uh, the antenna loading coil itself can only take 200 watts. All right, let's go look at the uh, 40 meter real quick. In the, the antenna maximum rated is 200 watts, so that's what it's rated for on voice. That's 40 meter. About 10 dB and 12 dB loss. There's 20 meter. I think for 20 meter, I think it's a perfectly acceptable antenna to have a half, uh, you know, half power loss. Now at 35 feet, I'm only losing about 2.3, which is not bad. These takeoff angles are kind of interesting, but we'll take a look at uh, 15 meter. I'm actually picking up gain on 15 meter, about 2.7, which is almost double. Not quite, but that's not bad. I'm sure there's more activity on 15. I'll have to keep working that. And the last one is 28 meters. Pretty much unity gain here. You get a little bit of loss. Again, all these all these calculations are based on uh, about a minus 8 dB loss on the coax, and then, of course, the actual advertised loss. So, all right, that's it, my friends. Hope this helps. This is just something to give you an idea of what this antenna is doing uh, from a dB loss standpoint and how what you might expect uh, based on the advertised data. Okay, my friends, sounds good. Uh, thank you for watching 73.